In today's world, navigating the ocean is relatively simple. We have compasses, GPS, radar, and even maps that indicate the winds and the currents of the oceans. People use these tools every day to get to where they're going. But what did we do before all this technology? Some early sailors used the stars, others used mechanical devices, but Micronesian sailors used sticks. Mmm. You heard that correctly. Early mariners from the Marshall Islands developed a unique way of navigating the Pacific Ocean. Stick charts were essentially maps made of sticks, sennet fibers, and cowrie shells. These charts helped sailors travel between the Marshall Islands, which were separated by miles of open ocean. What might look like a kindergartner's after-school art project to the untrained eye is actually a sophisticated tool used by the Marshallese. The collection of sticks were significant contributors to the history of cartography. They were the first tools of their kind to record the swells of the ocean. And if it wasn't obvious already, these stick charts were incredibly difficult to read, not only for just outsiders, but also fellow Micronesian sailors. This is because each chart is highly individualized, only fully understood by the person who made it. Modern day anthropologists still have yet to fully understand how these stick charts were used to navigate the ocean. This is because the charts are not necessarily telling you where each island is, and better yet, they're not even to scale. These charts rather show where ocean currents and winds are located. For those of you who don't know, the ocean has a vast network of currents that move throughout the world. The ocean's currents are driven by winds, tides, water density, and even the rotation of the Earth. This is due to what scientists call the Coriolis effect. Imagine a person trying to walk in a straight line across a spinning merry-go-round. Winds in ocean water get deflected from a straight path as they travel across a spinning earth. For centuries, the Marshallese took advantage of the currents and tides. They developed a method called wave piloting to travel in between islands. Wave piloting is a form of ocean navigation that involves steering in between islands based on the shape and direction of the waves. This is a highly instinctual method. Navigators would tune into their senses and memory to guide them on their journeys. They would either crouch or lie prone in a canoe and feel how the canoe was being moved by the ocean swells beneath them. The Marshallese are masters of understanding the ocean. Navigators tried to understand the effects of islands from blocking swells and generating counterswells to a certain extent, but they mainly focused on the refraction of swells. The kind that would come into contact with undersea slopes of islands as they interact with swells coming from an opposite direction. They recognized four distinct ocean swells, the Relieb, the Kalieb, the Mandakarik, and the Mandaki. Forgive me for butchering those pronunciations. The Marshallese would then represent these swells by the curves of the stick in their charts. Relieb swells are referred to as backbone swells. They are the strongest of the ocean swells and they're generated by the northeast trade winds. These swells are present all year round, even when the trade winds do not penetrate as far south as the Marshall Islands. Kaleeb swells are a weaker version of the Relieb swells. These swells can only be detected by highly skilled navigators and, like the Relieb, they're present all year round. But Nalkarik swells are just as strong as the Relieb and they're present all year round, but they're only located in the southern islands. And lastly, the Bundakiing swells are the weakest of the four swells, and they're only located in the Northern Islands. Other than that, not much else is really known about how the Marshallese were able to tell the difference between each swell. They just do it. Modern day anthropologists are trying to fully understand wave piloting, but the art form is so rare that only a few living practitioners are alive today. This knowledge was only entrusted to a select few rulers and even then was only passed down from father to son. All us outsiders can really do is watch from afar and appreciate the ingenuity and the instincts of the Marshallese. I am not and will never be worthy. Thank you for watching this episode of Knowledge Jump. Like and subscribe, and as always, we believe in you.